Hello again. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to show you something that um, is probably the cheapest modification you, you're ever going to do. Um, and it's going to save on your knees and you know, getting a wet backside and everything. Because it's the bane of astronomers all over the place is um, actual polar aligning where you've got to get down on your knees or your backside and you're sort of looking through your polar scope to, to get your alignment and you search on the internet and there's like all sorts of different ways that people are doing it like putting a piece of carpet on the floor or finding a step for a caravan or something like that. Um, so I thought well what if you could fit a webcam to your polar scope and then just you know plug into your polar scope and do it through your laptop screen. So what we need first of all is uh, one of these which is the SPC 900 NC webcam. Uh, just a couple of things to do with that really is we need to lose this because it's, it's just useless really for what we need. Now on the front of one of these you see the, the focusing ring and we're going to need that part. Now it's also important to note if you look at it edge on you can see that there's actually a step there which is going to help us along with this. Now we need to remove this ring and the easiest way I've found of doing it is with a pair of these just normal kitchen scissors and all you do is put them underneath like so and just a sharp snap upwards and out it comes. Now we're going to need this part um, so keep that off to one side for a, for a few moments and the other thing that we're going to need is if you go to a local plumber's suppliers or in my case I went to B&Q and I found this now it's a 32mm plug end stop, it's for, uh, for waste pipe, uh, looks a little bit like a, a little top hat. Uh, the thing is that the internal diameter is actually just a really nice fit on the end of the majority of polar scopes and definitely on the EQ series, the, the sky watchers. So we're going to just need to modify that a little bit. Now the cost of one of those is uh, 99p, which is, um, well, it's definitely cheap enough. Now what you want to do with that is you want to be able to drill a hole in that end and the hole needs to be 21 millimeters um, because if you have a look on this clip that we removed the focusing ring, you can see that there's a little step there that we're going to be using and that is 21 millimeters in diameter. Now if you have a look at a brand new one of these, it's even, I don't know if, you, if the camera will pick that up, but it's even actually got rings around it where it's been machined so you can you can actually see where the dead centre is because that's quite important that you want your hole central. Now you might have a lathe uh, that you can whip this into and, and do it that way. Uh, what I did is I drilled a small hole right in the dead centre, um, which obviously like I said is marked out, and then I used a stepper drill. Now the thing is with a stepper drill you're not going to get it absolutely central unless you're really really careful and also stepper drills tend to go up in um, even numbers um, you know sort of 18, 20, uh, 22 millimeters so what I did is I drilled this to, to 22 millimeters which means that you'll just get a tiny little bit of play which is no big deal really and what we're going to do is we're going to take this and push it inside that stop end so that we get this like so and that little shoulder that we showed you earlier is is fitting on the thickness of that the stop end on that uh, on that plug now I also found that the the actual thickness of this material on these is a little bit too much um, you know for it for it to just fit nicely um, and to still have these pins protruding up to the right level so all I did is I took the original one one of these and I used some fairly coarse wet and dry paper laid out on a table and just did a circular pattern after I've drilled my hole circular pattern just to take it down that little bit it's actually needs taking down about a millimetre and you can see there how it's how it's been rubbed down uh, so what we need to do next like I said is to take this insert it into there like that and we need to glue it now obviously like I said I mine's 22 millimetres it just gives me a little bit of play which means that when I come to glue it, if I look down that end, I can just sort of have that little bit of adjustment to make sure it's central. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go off and glue this one up and we're back in a moment for part two. Right, uh, we've now done the gluing. Um, I used an epoxy that's designed for plastic um, and just bonded that now into my, my PVC plug end stuff. 
and now if you take your camera again and just relocate those points where it plugs into the three little clips like so and that's it we clips back in that's now in there it's fixed solid you just simply to focus it you just turn this because it's now fixed to the focusing ring and that will now push over your polar scope now you may find that it, once you've pushed on it might you might find that it's it's just too much of a snug fit and you'll have trouble getting it off and in that situation what i would recommend is just drill a small hole at the bottom end just to let the air into it you know to stop that that suction effect when it when it's been pushed on um, so what we'll do next is we'll take a look at it in place and we'll take a look at a view actually through it once it's connected to the scope here we are at the mount side of things um, on my own mount as you can see there's the polar scope now if we take the the camera you can see that it just pushes snugly on there and it's definitely not obtrusive it's uh, it looks quite a tidy item of kit and don't forget that you'll obviously what you won't be leaving it there you'll you, you know you'll push it on and do your alignment and then take it back off again um, in a moment we're just going to connect up to the laptop and I'll take some video actually viewing through the camera um, through the polar scope um, as it is with the weather in the UK at the moment and the fact that it's not even actually dark here yet um, we won't be able to do an actual star test but anybody who knows or is familiar with uh, this particular webcam I honestly can't see any problems with um, with Polaris showing up um, in the viewfinder you know once uh, once we get it in a, in a real world situation because they are quite a sensitive camera and I think you'll agree that that's, um, that's quite a tidy little modification for the price of what 99 pence on a webcam um, and so we'll have a look through the, the laptop now and see what it looks like okay um, there's a few actually looking through the polar scope now uh, you can see everything in the reticule there is, is showing up nice and sharply and obviously the, the, the view that's through the scope is of my ceiling um, or, you know in a real world sort of situation it'd be dark and you know I don't think you'd have much problem seeing uh, seeing Polaris to be able to line everything up so overall I think that's, uh, that's been quite a success and you know have a go yourself and, and let us know how you go on and once again thanks for watching